السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد السلام عليكم my dear brothers and sisters, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions and he says, بَادِرُوا بِالْأَعْمَالِ فِتَنًا كَقِطَعِ اللَّيْلِ الْمُظْلِمَةِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we should strive and we continue by doing good deeds, strive to do good deeds. بَادِرُوا بِالْأَعْمَالِ Do good deeds. فِتَنًا كَقِطَعِ اللَّيْلِ الْمُظْلِمَةِ There's going to be trials and tribulations. There's so much fitna, like the dark night. A person in the morning is going to be a believer and in the evening is going to be a disbeliever. And in the evening is going to be a disbeliever and in the morning is going to be a believer. Why? This individual is going to sell his religion, his deen, for the worldly gain. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions and he says, there's going to be a yam of sabr, the days of patience, or the times of patience, the times of fitna, from amongst you. If you do good deeds during that time, you will have the reward of 50 people. So the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, they said 50 people from amongst them or us? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 50 people from amongst you, or companions, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this shows you the importance of worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala during the trials and tribulations, the times of fit and during the times of trials and tribulation. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions and he says, that the one who holds on to, uh, to his uh, religion in the times of fitan, holding on to your deen, my dear brothers and sisters, it's like holding on to charcoal. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an Afwan, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala encouraged every single one of us, my dear brothers and sisters, to have good companions, to be around the righteous individual, individuals. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentions and He says, to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam O Muhammad Wasbir nafsaka Ma'a alladheena yad'oona rabbahum bil ghadati wal aishi yuriduna wajha Every single day Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Every single Friday we will suffer Surah Al-Kaf And Allah Azza wa Jal says O oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Be patient with those righteous individuals Those that call upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he spoke about companions, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمن لا تصاحب إلا مؤمن That your companion and your friend should only be a believer. You, your companion and your friend should only be a believer. Not just any believer, a righteous believer. And only a righteous individual should be eaten from your food. And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions and he says, المرء على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل That the individual is upon the religion of his companion, your friend. So know who your companion is. My dear brothers and sisters, many of us, we choose our companionship and our friendship based upon this, a friend of, this friend of us is someone that's from my ethnicity. Or this individual went to the same school. Or this individual is my neighbor. Or this individual, I've known this individual for a long time. If this individual, my dear brothers and sisters, keeps you far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no khair, there is no goodness in this relationship. And that's why there's a saying in Arabic, there is no goodness in a friendship that's going to lead you to the hellfire. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, Al-Akhillah, that companions and friends are going to be enemies to one another on your muqiyama. Except for illa al muttaqin except for those who are pious, my dear brothers and sisters. Brothers, be around good brothers. Sisters, be around good sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ On the day of resurrection, a person is going to be biting on his finger. And this person is going to say, I wish 
that I did not, I wish I followed the path of the prophets. Ya waylata laytani lam attakhith fulan al-khalila. I wish I have not taken so and so as a companion. Why? لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانِ الْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا That this individual, he misled me from the right path. From the right, from the right path after the guidance came to me. Subhanallah. And Allah Azza wa Jal, when he speaks about those individuals that entered the hellfire, some of them entered the hellfire, why? Because of the disbelief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Because of their sins, because of the companions. كفروا, there was disbelievers. When they entered the Jahannam, they would say, Rabbana, O oh our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, they are going to, on the day of resurrection, they're going to say, O oh Allah, show us those individuals that misguided us. From the mankind and the jinn kind. Why? نَجْعَلْهُمَا تَحْتَ أَقْدَامِنَا So that we can step on those individuals. لِيَكُونَ مِنْ أَسْفَلِينَ So they can be of the lowest of the low. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions and He says, وَقَالُوا رَبَّنَا They will say, Oh our Lord, إِنَّ أَطَعْنَا سَادَتَنَا We followed our leaders and our chiefs from our communities. وَكُبَرَاءَنَا And those elders from our community فَأَضَلُّونَ السَّبِيلَ Those individuals, they misguided us on the right path. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضُعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ وَالْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَبِيرًا And also another narration, in another way, كَثِيرًا رَبَّ Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, those individuals that we followed, they misled us, they, they misguided us on the right path. رَبَّنَا آتِهِمْ ضُعْفَيْنِ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ Oh Allah Azza wa Jal, double their punishment. Not only that. وَلْعَنْهُمْ لَعْنًا كَثِيرًا Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, curse these individuals greatly. Subhanallah. So my dear brothers, choose your companions wisely. Choose your friends wisely. My dear brothers, your companions, they can affect you even in a time of death. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his uncle Abu Talib, when he was dying, when he was passing away, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh my uncle, say one word, that I, it, it could be a proof for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This word can save you from the Jahannam. Oh my uncle, say la ilaha illallah. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, anyone who says anyone's last word, is la ilaha illallah, this individual is going to enter into paradise. Oh, my uncle is, is arguing with him. Who was the companion of Abu Talib? My dear brothers, you had Abu Jahl, Umayyah bin Khalaf, all the heads and the chiefs of the kuffar of Quraysh. They're sitting next to him. They are, they, they, and they say to him, are you going to leave the religion of Abdul Muttalib? Are you going to leave the religion of your forefather? There's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is talking to him. He's dying, he's in his last breath. And they're saying to him, Oh my uncle, say La ilaha illallah. One word that's going to save you in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal. He said, no, I'm going to be upon the religion of Abdul Muttalib. And he died upon disbelief. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions and he says, that the least individual, the least individual is going to be punished the least amount in Jahannam is Abu Talib. And how is he going to get punished? Why? The reason why he's the least amount of person is going to be punished in Jahannam is because he's someone that helped the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in times of difficulty. So as an intercession, his punishment is going to be lessened. And you know what his punishment is, my dear brothers and sisters? There's going to be a some sort of shoes that he's going to wear. And that shoe is going to be made out of fire. What's going to happen when he wears that shoes? is going to fry his brain. And, that, and, and he's going to think that he has the most, he's the most individual has been punished in the hellfire. When in reality, he's the least individual that has been punished in the hellfire. My dear brothers, choose your companions wisely. 
make sure that you are around those individuals that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those individuals that when you see them, they get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those individuals that are coming to the house of Allah azza wa jal, those individuals that are seeking knowledge, those individuals that obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those individuals that when you see them, every single time your iman increases. Make sure you, you are on good companions. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu when he spoke about, the, uh, he gave the example of companions. Having, he said the good companion is like the perfume seller. You know, sometimes, mashallah, a brother might, you might go past a brother, mashallah, he smells nice of perfume. When you go to a perfume shop, a person sells perfume, subhanallah. That's the example of the good companion. When you're around him, you do goodness. It smells good. But when he gave the example of a bad companion, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said he's like the individual who is a blacksmith. When you go to around blacksmith, you're going to be smelling bad. Make sure you are with those that remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's better for you to be. You know, some people they would say that, Shaykh, if I would leave my, you know, my old companions, or if I leave my friends, I'm going to be sad. You know, I'm going to be lowly. Um, how am I going to find new friends? How am I going to find new companions? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that you don't leave anything, something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Out of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, except that Allah Azza wa Jal is going to replace you with something better. Leaving those companions for the sake of Allah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to replace you with better companions. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is going to replace you with righteous companions, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't feel lowly. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will always bring around good people around you. Now, some of your companions that you want to leave, some, a, a person might say that, you know, do I leave them completely? No. When you see them, smile at them. Be good with them. Give them good da'wah. And, 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 and also make dua that Allah guides them. Give them, make dua that Allah guides them. Be a person that Allah uses you to guide others. A lot of people, they say, you know me, I can't give da'wah. I'm not a sheikh. I'm not a student of knowledge. Every single person, every single one of you, my dear brothers, is a caller. Either you call towards good or towards evil. Whenever you see him, remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remind him of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions and he says that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides one person through you, it is better than the red camel. Subhanallah. Look at this. If Allah azza wa jal guides one individual through you, this individual that maybe is not practicing Islam, if Allah guides this individual, my dear, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, it's as if it's, it is better than the red camel. <laughs> protect yourself. Protect yourself. Don't make sure that your companions are not those that lead you to the hellfire. How many people they started smoking because of their friends? How many individuals started doing drugs because of their friends? How many individuals started drinking alcohol because of their friends? How many people they stopped praying because of their companions? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us, do not follow the khat, do not follow the khutawat al-shaytan, do not follow the footsteps of the shaytan. A person might say, I'm going to, you know, being in that companionship, I'm going to change them. And slowly, slowly, he falls back to, in, into his, he, he stops practicing, he, he is this person is no longer a person upon al istiqam upon steadfastness. Well, Allah told us to not follow the footsteps of the shaitan. The shaitan is not going to tell you to stop praying at all. He's not going to tell you, oh, complete, stop praying straight away. No. Maybe you're on that bad, bad companionship. In the beginning, you're going to say, you know what? It's, you know what? Salah will enter. You say, you know what? It's, it's, it's dhuhr. You can delay until, you know, for a bit. And then you would start delaying dhuhr to asr. And then maybe you, know, you must delay and then the salah until maghrib and then to isha. And then a person must say, you know what, you can do qadha. And then all of a sudden you see yourself not praying. And then khalas, subhanAllah, you, you no longer practice it. 
Make sure that you're a person who has istiqamah, steadfast upon his religion, my dear brothers. And from the things that's going to help you and aid you. Now, we, the first part we spoke about good companions, having good companions. Now, the second part of the lecture, we're going to talk about how to have istiqamah. Because the, uh, being our good companions is important, but there's certain steps that a person needs to do in order for him to be steadfast upon Islam. Because what happens is you could fall off. You can easily fall off and you can return back to your old habits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says that those individuals will say Allah is our Lord. And that they have steadfastness upon their religion. They're steadfast on the time of their deathbed. The angels are going to descend upon them. And they're going to say, do not have any fear. And do not have any grief. And we give you glad tannis of Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He said, those individuals who say Allah is our Lord and they have istiqamah, for those individuals there isn't any sadness and for those individuals there isn't any grief. How do I have istiqamah? How can I be steadfast upon my religion so I don't be around bad companionship, so I don't fall into sins? Number one, make sure that you're a person who's praying this five days salah on time. If you're um, in the house of Allah, if you can't pray in the masjid and you're at work, pray at work. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, when, he, when Allah praises the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, there are those individuals who establish the salah. They are the ones who establish the salah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says that, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, command your family to pray the salah and be patient upon it. Continue to remind them. We do not ask you for any rizq, any provision. We are the one who provide for you. One of the scholars of Islam, he said, establish your salah. Allah azza wa is going to give you istiqamah. Allah azza wa is going to give you provision. And that's why one of the righteous predecessors, one of the Salaf, he mentions and he says that I, a person, I believe a person, a misses Salah because of a sin that he committed, subhanAllah. And that's why Sufyan al-Thawri, he mentions and he says that I committed one sin. And because of that one sin that I committed, I couldn't pray Qiyam al for six months. See, the first thing establishing the Salah. The second thing in order for you to be, to be upon the right path, you need to make sure that you're an individual who abstains from sin. Because this is what causes you to fall back in your religion. And that's why Abdullah Mubarak, he mentions and he says, رَأَيْتُ الذُّنُوبَ تُمِيتُ الْقُلُوبَ وَقَدْ يُرِذُ اللَّهِ إِدْمَانُهَا وَتَرْكُ الذُّنُوبِ حَيَاتُ الْقُلُوبِ وَخَيْرُ نَفْسِكَ عَصِيَانَا The sins, they make the heart dead. And it causes a person to be disgraced. And liver of the sins, it will give life to your heart and it's better for you to disobey yourself so make sure that you're praying your salah make sure that you are abstain from sins also make sure that you're making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah azza wa jal gives keeps you firm upon his religion do not be deceived say, by you coming to the masjid or and you know sometimes a person arrogance or something about getting his heart because tomorrow you could be a person that lives a religion. You could, you could be a person who's no longer practicing. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said that the hearts are between the fingers of Ar-Rahman. Allah turns it and he tosses and he turns it how he wills. Today you're a believer, tomorrow you might be a disbeliever, may Allah protect us. Today you're practicing, tomorrow uh, you might not be practicing. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to mention, is to say, Ya muqallib al thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Oh Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, Keep my heart firm upon your religion. And that's why, subhanAllah, one of, uh, one of the scholars, Shaykh Badr Hafizullah, he mentions and he says, he's a Shaykh in Saudi Arabia, Shaykh Badr Al-Utaybi, he mentions and he says, I know a group of individuals. These individuals, they were people who used to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were individuals who, mashallah, come into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were people of knowledge. And now these individuals, may Allah protect us, they no longer practicing. They left an Islam. May Allah protect us. And some of them are cursed in the deal of an Islam. Look at these individuals, subhanAllah. Always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
to keep your heart firm from your religion. And not only that, in the last point, and I'm going to end with this, as Al Hassan radiallahu anhu mentions, and he says, "Khairul kalam, ma qalla wa dilla." The best speech is what's concise and to the point. Make sure whatever that you learn, you implement from Al Islam. Anything that you learn, you implement. Nasr Allah subhanahu wa taala he mentions and he says, if they if they only implemented what they heard from Allah subhanahu wa taala, la kana khair Allah. If they only heard, implemented what they heard from Allah azza wa jalla, it would be better for them, and it would have, and it would have given them. Firmness. Jazakum Allah khairan wa barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah we'll start the Q&A. Yes. And you've known for many, many years. No. And they sin. Yes. But you don't want to break that friendship. Mm-hmm. How can you correct them or advise them in the best way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions and he says, Speak good to the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, By the mercy of Allah azza wa jal, you are soft to them. وَلَوْ كُتَّ فَضْلٍ غَلِيدُ الْقَلْبِ مِنَ فَضْلٍ مِنْ حَرْكِ If you were harsh-hearted, they would have ran away from you. This is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know, and who from amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You had Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, Khalid bin Walid as well, and other companions. If you were harsh-hearted, they would have ran away from you. So when it comes to advising them, make sure that you advise them in the best of ways. Give, you know, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala He mentions and He says to Musa when you give him da'wah to Fir'aun, Make sure that you give him a good speech, a, a soft speech. And make sure that when you when you're around this individual, that this individual is not disobeying Allah Azza wa or this individual is sinning. Or he's with a group of individuals, others. Why? Because when he's with his friends or with a group of others that are also not practicing, you might, it might affect you, you might, you might become weak. Be with him, advise him, but also limit your time with him. This person should not be with you every single time. Limit your time with this individual, advise him, and make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him hidayah and set for upon Islam. Naam. Tfadl. So you So obviously, when it comes to you know your your your, your, your colleagues or your neighbors or your non-Muslim neighbors, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He mentions and He told us that we should be individuals that, that are just. So when it comes to them, you know, be nice, be friendly, uh, give them da'wah, but they should not be your companions. They should not be your companions. No. Tawdah. Zakallah um, khairan. Number one, by you leading by example, by you coming to the masjid and attending the classes, and by reminding them, constantly reminding them, and trying your best for them to come, to, uh, drag them to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just make dua for them. And that's, that's, that's the best thing that you can do. Now, tfadl. Zakallah khairan. Sorry? What does, it take to be what does it take to be a good friend? Number one, a person who follows what Allah Azza wa has commanded in the Quran. And he abstains from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made haram for him. That's number two. Number three, he's a person who is a qudwa saliha, a, 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 a righteous example. And number four, he's an individual that gives da'wah to others through his actions. No. Tawdha. No, Tawdha. If you know your friend is not going to become Muslim, but you've known him for over 20 years, yes. and there's a deep-rooted emotional attachment, 
Okay. Should you completely cut them off? And if so, what's the advice on practical step to distance um, from those types of non-Muslim friends? So I one, should you cut that person off? Mm -hmm. And secondly, what's the practical steps to remove yourself from those kind of companions? No, I don't think a person should. Just make sure that you're not around them when they're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But use this, exa use this opportunity to give them da'wah. But, but one, what I mean is limit yourself. Don't be 24-7 with this individual. Limit yourself. But use this opportunity to give them da'wah. You know, but you know you can invite them to your house. Um, teach them about, about, about Islam. Give them da'wah to them. No. That's, that's, that's what I could say. Tafadhal al Um, as for when it comes to you giving them food, then it shouldn't be an issue with that. As for them giving you food, just make sure that the food that they give is halal and nothing haram about it. As for parties, Allahu Alam, Allahu Alam. Uh, depends if it's if it's where you think or you know that that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to be disobeyed and there's going to be haram there. Then you shouldn't be in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disobeyed. I don't know which party it is, but just make sure that the environment is a good environment for your deen and for your iman. Barakallah fiqh. Anyone else? Barakallah. Yes. The importance of family because sometimes nowadays the youth they like to choose their friends over family. The Messenger of Allah, he mentions and he says that the best of you are those who are best in their families, and I'm the one who's best in my family. And the Messenger of Allah, he mentions and he says that if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in your age and in your provision, Make sure that you are a person who keeps the type of kinship. Your parents, they have hukuk, they have rights upon you. Your siblings, they have rights upon you. Your uncles, your aunties, or your relatives, those that are connected through you through blood, they have their rights upon you. So make sure that you're an individual who f fulfills their rights. And be a person who's balanced. I'm not saying don't be around your be, don't be around your friends and don't chill with your friends, but make sure that your family comes first, and the rights of your uh, parents and your relatives. Now, Zakallah khairan. Hello, Fadl. Zakallah khair. We start with Zakallah khair. A good reminder for myself and everyone here. Um, I was going to do a quick, quick uh, insight into um, my, my life and how I won't, I won't go off too long. Yeah, so I grew up in, the, uh, in an area. Oh, sorry. Um, I grew up in uh, down the south coast. So I don't know if anyone's been to the south coast. About half an hour from Brighton, there's not a brown face to be seen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's white. And I went to a Christian boarding school, right? So you can imagine uh, young Saj quite confused growing up, right? Uh, involved in three church services a week. And all I knew was non-Muslim friends. That's it. So I imagine I went from the age of six to probably 15, 16 and having non-Muslim friends. So when a few years later I started working after university, um, I was given that word by, uh, by a brother called Abayd. And the first thing he was advising me was the influence I was taking from this group. Yeah, I wasn't doing necessarily anything too bad, but the influence was affecting me greatly, even though I wasn't you know, partying and, and, and whatever else. And I remember the day 
that he sat me down and he spoke to me about these individual friends and he said all listed all the things that I would do when I'm not with them. For example, you wouldn't pray, you wouldn't mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they wouldn't correct me. Um, of course they're non-Muslims, right? They they have no care in the world, they have no purpose in, in that regard. And ten years later I can tell you the biggest difference in my day-to-day -day life was changing that friends, getting rid of those friends. And it was as simple as one day I'm in a group, we're WhatsApping, we're catching up, we're playing football, blah blah blah. Uh, not very well, some of you know, uh, my, my, my touch is not very good. Um, to just leaving it, blocking, just leaving the WhatsApp groups. I didn't say bye, I didn't say anything. And imagine I've lived with these brother, that, these guys, right? And you have an attachment, right? You, you care about these people. And I look at that day and I look back and that was the first step to me actually taking the religion seriously. It was huge. I cannot express how big it was. And occasionally someone pops up on LinkedIn and you say, hi, how are you doing? Yeah, all good, thanks, yeah. And you give it, give it, you know, you exchange a handful of messages. You always do that classic, let's catch up soon. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just leave it. But bros, I cannot tell you the difference it made to my life. And then the next step was sifting through Brothers that were going to help me and just Muslims. Yeah. And that's a huge difference. Having brothers that are upon the Sunnah that are going to say, Saj, this isn't right. Saj, think about this. Saj, do this. Or the others that are passive that might go to Jummah sometimes. You know, you've got a keen interest because you like playing games with them or you support football and they do as well, even though they're a Man U fan and whatever else. So. The point I'm trying to make is, I'm a living example of a life changing because you remove friends. Sure, it might be extreme because I don't know how many of you have this, a similar situation, but um, by Allah, honestly, I would not be here if that group of friends did not change. In my eyes, anyway. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for the reminder, Stan. Um, May Allah make us best of companions as well. Right? So a uh, good reminder to make sure that we're good companions as well. Um, just a quick announcement is that on the Saturday, August 17th, we've got Sajid Umar. And it'll be a late night link up. So watch out for that. The posters will be out. The details will be out very soon, inshallah. And also the uh, topic as well. JazakAllah um, khair. We'll break now uh, until uh, Isha, sorry, in about 20 minutes time.